Okay, I want to talk about the PHP INI file. This is the settings file that PHP uses to know how it's supposed to handle different situations. In, if you've got MAMP installed, if that's what you're using for your PHP, um, if you look inside the MAMP folder itself and you find the bin folder, PHP, then the various versions of PHP that are installed, basically we're looking for the, uh, the PHP folder wherever you've got PHP installed. Inside there, there'll be a cont folder. This is the configuration folder, and there is your php.ini file. So I have a copy here that I made just as a reference. You'll see that every line that starts with a semicolon, these are all commented out lines, and there are a ton of comments in here. If you're ever looking to figure out how something works inside of here, chances are pretty good that there's going to be a comment that explains what the settings are for. But what I wanted to do right now was just kind of draw your attention to some really important stuff that's inside there. Having to do with errors. Um, you'll find very often on production servers that when you're using PHP, this setting is going to be set to off. So display errors equals off. If that is the case, then what happens is no errors will appear. So something will go wrong in your PHP page and you're looking at the, the output of the page and there's just nothing there. It just It's a blank page because something's gone wrong with the PHP, but you've told PHP or somebody has changed the setting to say that PHP shouldn't provide information as a security precaution. When you're working on your own version, if you're on localhost, make sure that this is set to on. Then what level of errors do you want? So you can set error reporting to e all, which is tell me absolutely everything, or error is just fatal runtime errors or less, e warning, runtime warnings, and well, there's all these different settings. And then there's another setting for log errors where you can turn that on to say that you want PHP to use this error log location this is where it's going to save it. So anytime there's an error, it's going to write into that log and to this level. So anything that you see on the screen will also be written in the log. That way you can go back and debug things that are going on. Okay, so that's the error stuff. Make sure that you've got display errors turned on at a minimum for yourself. Uh, request. Variables order. This EGPS PCS. You can change these letters around. These are the letters that you're allowed to use and you can put them in any order you want. What this has to do is we have super global arrays. There's the environmental variables, there's the get variables, the post variables, the cookies, and the session variables. These are all things where there's a name, there's an index for each one of these arrays. Every item in the array has a name. So get for example if you've got something in your query string called name there will be something in the get array with the key name but there could also be something in post or in cookie that is using that same name so this is the order we're saying from least important to most important this is the order we want to overwrite those variables so if i've got the same variable name in all five of these the one in session is the one that's at the end. It's the one that's going to win out. So we read these ones first, then the get, then the post, then the cookies, then the session. Again, play with this, put it in whatever order you want, but this is the default right here. And that's what it has to do with is on those off chances where you've got a variable of the same name or a, a key in the array with the same name in different areas, this is the order that it gets overwritten. When uploading files, there's a whole bunch of potential things that could go wrong or settings that could prevent you doing what you want to do. Um, post max size. So when somebody fills out a form and they submits the form, how much data are they allowed to post to the server? Now this doesn't include files. This is just for the data itself. So if they're copying and pasting a resume, we're saying, okay, yeah, you can have up to 32 megs worth of text. It's a tremendous amount of text that they can upload. Max execution time. Well, this is how long do you want PHP to be running the script before it says, you know what, this is taking too long, I'm going to give up now. 
30 seconds is fine, but there's going to be instances where you know that you're dealing with a lot of data. You're dealing with big files or whatever. You're talking to a database and you're looking at big record sets. You may want to increase that. So that's the max execution time. Max input time is how much time out of this execution time, how much time is allowed to be spent looking at the input, parsing the data that's coming in. Uh, memory limit, how much memory it's allowed to use up. Um, so 128 megs, that's pretty good. File uploads, if this is turned off, you are saying that PHP is not willing to accept files that are being sent to it, posted to it. Um, it's as simple as that. Upload temp directory, so your MAMP folder, the temp folder, Remember from the session very uh, the session video that I made the other day? The temp folder is where all those session files are kept. Inside of there, there's a PHP folder, and this is where all the uploaded files get placed. When a file gets uploaded from a web page, the file arrives and gets placed in this folder temporarily with a temp name. From there, you can move it to whatever location you want if you want the file. But this is the place where files are originally placed. And if if you don't have this, or if you write a non-existent directory or a directory that's got, uh, it's restricted so you can't write to it, there's going to be a failure to upload the file. Uh, the temp directory, yep, yeah, that's that one. And upload max file size. Well, that's each individual file. How big is that file allowed to be? Last few things. Uh, time zone. You get to set the time zone for your web server. You can say, okay, here's the default time that my server is running at. So all of my time and date calculations that I'm doing in PHP will be based off of this time zone. So important, keep that in mind. And if we take a look uh, on the php.net site, there's actually a section uh, inside the manual time zones. So there's for Africa, here's all the available ones. For the Americas, here's all the available ones. Um, Antarctica, Arctic, Asia, in the Atlantic Ocean, so the Caribbean islands, uh, down in Australia, Europe, in the Indian Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, and ones that aren't uh, listed inside there. So we have, like here, I could put Canada Eastern instead if I want it. So there's a long, long list of possible time zones. We can use that inside the PHP INI file. And stuff having to do with the session. So session safe path. This is where it's going to save those session files. Do you want to use cookies for it as opposed to the query string? So one means yes. Uh, session name. This is the name of the cookie. So if you've watched the video on sessions and how they work, you'll know that if you looked in the browser under the application tab tab for Chrome in the web dev tools, there was a section for cookies. This is the name of the cookie that gets created with your PHP session ID. You can rename this. It can be called anything you want. And the last one here, max lifetime, garbage collection, max lifetime. This is how long it's supposed to last. So this is uh, 1440 seconds uh, divided by 60. So that's uh, 24 minutes. So 24 minutes is the default time in your php.ini file for sessions to last before garbage collection will go around and say, okay, well, this, this file is no longer needed. I will delete it. You can change that number again. This is the number of seconds. So you can change it to whatever number you want. Okay. So there is one default PHP INI file, and then you can also place this file inside of other folders. So it's kind of like the HT access file. You can place it in other folders, and the one closest to your uh, web page is the one that's going to be used to overwrite various settings. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I uh, hope you understand a little bit better what PHP is doing behind the scenes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.